I'm really pleased to present another episode of How To Get The Shot. Today, we go behind the scenes of a shot that happened recently at this old farm ruin here in central Victoria in the beautiful Australian bush. We have a number of subjects to look at in this episode as there are quite a few bits and pieces laying around on the farm. As soon as I saw this old chimney, I knew I wanted to get a shot of it with the Milky Way behind and maybe a star trail also. The first thing I always do is line up the sky behind my subjects to make sure I'll be able to see the Milky Way core in the sky. I typically use Stellarium and photo pills to do my planning for my night photography adventures. So here we are looking at the scene and lining it up with the augmented reality view in photo pills. As you can see, it lines up perfectly just behind the chimney early in the morning when the Milky Way core is rising in the eastern sky. So, in my initial scout of this location, which was in the daylight, I made sure this view would be available to me. I actually had to wait about a month to come and shoot here because it was still too early in the year to get the core in the morning night sky. The other view I was after was to the south, as I was wanting to put together a star trail, once again with the chimney in the foreground. When I first arrive at a location, I always get a feel for the surroundings in the dark, even though I've already been here in the daytime, it helps me to get the creative juices flowing. It's quite amazing how the mind starts racing as the night vision kicks in and you begin to see where the light is or perhaps where you need to add light to fill the shadows. I always try to make sure my main subject is silhouetted against the night sky. This invariably means getting the tripod down low to the ground to make this happen. In this particular location, there are quite a few trees surrounding the farm so I need to be able to see the gaps between the trees to obtain the best angle. Okay, so once I've sorted out the basic composition, I'll set up the camera and get started. I'm going to do extensive light painting and make use of multiple exposure blending. My main reason for doing this is to get the light coming from different angles and to ensure a very sharp and crisp image throughout the plane of focus. The settings I use for these shots don't vary much at all. I'm using the Nikon D750 with the Nikon 20mm f1.8 lens. My intention is to take one background sky shot with the aperture fairly wide open, in this case at f2.2. Then I'll set the shutter speed to 20 seconds. That's the maximum I can go with this focal length before I start getting star trailing. I'll then set the ISO to 2500. Just on that, Many people ask me about how high to set the ISO, as everyone seems to do it differently. Because I'm shooting with the Nikon camera, I have the ability to underexpose the shot somewhat and simply raise the exposure in post-production without adding any noise to the image. Now, if I was shooting with a Canon camera, for example, I'd be raising the ISO much higher when shooting as they don't handle raising the exposure in post as well. It's a camera-specific issue and one brand isn't better than the other, just different. Also, because my style of night photography relies heavily on light painting and blending images, I'm effectively getting rid of lots of the noisy areas anyway. Remember that the noise hides in the dark shadows, so adding light helps immensely. When I'm happy with the background exposure, I change my camera settings to give me the best possible image for my foreground light painted shots. Here, I'll be still shooting for 20 seconds, but I'll close down the aperture to f4 and lower the ISO to 500. I need the 20 seconds to get around and paint the light into the shot, but because I'm not shooting the night sky, I can lower both the ISO and aperture to get a very sharp and clean image. The other thing is, I'll change the focus to the chimney to make it really sharp. This is called focus stacking and is really quite a simple thing to do once you get your mind set to how you want to achieve the final look of the image. All that is needed now is the light painting. This is certainly an art form, but there are a number of rules that we need to keep in mind. Never ever paint in light from the same direction as the camera. This will give flat and lifeless light. Always light from angles. Make sure the light is always moving as this will decrease the likelihood of hotspots. The chimney was lit from all different directions as I'm always happy to have more shots to work with than I'll actually use. You'll also notice that I'm using a torch here with a CTO gel attached to the front. I'm doing this because I like to set my white balance fairly cool, somewhere around 3500 Kelvin. I like the ambience this colour temperature gives, but if I was to light paint with a bare LED torch, it would produce an ugly blue tone. So, my solution is to gel the torch and warm it up. 
As well as that, I placed this Z96 video light inside the chimney, also with an orange gel to warm up the fireplace a bit. The video light was reflected around the fireplace and out onto the grass in the front for added effect. After that, I walked down the track behind the tree and lit it from the side and behind to give a lovely backlit perspective. When I shot the star trail image of the chimney, I took three 10 minute exposures at ISO 100. In hindsight, I probably should have made it ISO 200 or perhaps even ISO 400 because I had to boost the exposure quite a lot in post-production. The light painted foreground shots lit from all directions. I made the ISO 500. These were 20 second exposures and I set the aperture to F4. I always use a remote trigger to release the camera shutter as this makes it easy for me to get into position to do the light painting. These have a range of over 50 metres and they work really, really well. The next step is to blend all the images into a final shot. We don't have time in this video to go through all of that in detail, but I do all my basic edits to each shot in Lightroom and then export them all as separate layers into Photoshop for the blending. This is done by utilising layer masks and erasing the areas that I don't need in each image. When an area is erased, it allows whatever is visible on the image below it in the stack to show through. As you can see, this is a very effective way of achieving high quality and stunning nightscape images. Like everything we're shooting at night, it takes practice to master these techniques. But I can tell you that if you shoot in the field with these editing concepts in mind, it'll make the job a whole lot easier later on. Anyway, let's move on to our next image. When I saw the old plough sitting under this dead tree, I knew it was going to become an interesting subject for light painting. I particularly like rusted old machinery as it's loaded with charm and character, as you can see here. Once again, I set the camera really low to capture the machine silhouetted against the night sky. I think this is a vital step in achieving the image I want as it really separates the machine from any other distracting background elements. The camera settings for the background sky shot are identical to the previous shot. The aperture is f2.2, the shutter speed 20 seconds, with the ISO at 2500. Focus is critical at this point, so I spend a bit of time getting that right by zooming in with the live view screen. Focusing on stars requires lots of practice, but you can refer to my previous video for suggestions on how to do this. Once I've got a good sharp background image, I'll move on to light painting the foreground. I consider the foreground to be just as important as the Milky Way background image and I spend a lot of time working through this process. I'll do the same as demonstrated in the previous image by lighting from different angles, making sure I have all the components of the machine lit, but never from the same angle as the camera. While I was at the property, I took quite a number of images and as you can see here, they've all come out really well using the techniques explained previously. So that's how I took the shots. As I've mentioned before, it comes down to pre-planning, scouting the location during daylight hours, and knowing what you'll be taking before you arrive. From there, it's a matter of creative execution and process. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll look forward to catching up with you again. Take care.